Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video from the Vaidya's Chess Hub and today I wish to discuss with you the power of the double check. It's a very lethal tactic uh, and often tends to be overlooked and at all levels there are players who suffer due to this neglect. So I've chosen a game to show you today and let us see what happens in, in it. So the game begins 1e4 and black plays the Karo Khan defense. So any beginner, any amateur watching this who's new to chess, this particular order of move is called the Karo Khan game. So white plays 1e4 and black plays 1c6. So this is the Karo Khan defense. The white player continued with d4, black played d5, white continues with knight to c3. So now you see the point is that the white player is supporting his pawn on e4, which is being attacked by the pawn on d5. In the game, black took, e, d takes e5, sorry e4, knight takes e4, knight f6, white defended his knight with the queen, and black played e5. Now you would feel this pawn is blundered. Why pawn on e5? It doesn't have any support. But black is eventually going to win it back. We'll see how. So white took, d takes e5, and now comes the move queen a5 check. So this is fork. In chess you call this idea a fork, where a piece attacks two or more pieces at the same time. That is a fork. So here queen is giving a check. And also, she's going to win the white pawn on e5. White played bishop d2, attacking the queen. Queen took the pawn. And here, I appreciate the plan white player had made up. Long castle. Now, you would see here that the knight was attacked twice and was defended only once so white could have played something like f3 or i don't know that's the only that's the only move at the moment because if you see the knight is pinned so knight f6 is really not a legal move so to come up with castling was indeed uh, a good thing for white and it, in fact, as it turns out, it, was, it meant that he was winning the match because black took here with the knight. And now there's a fantastic continuation. Uh, and that is the point of our discussion today, the double check. I would recommend that you pause the video and then try to look for the continuation. You can pause the video now. Okay, so... If you had paused the video, did you come up with the answer? Yeah. The continuation is simply beautiful. Queen d8 check, sacrifice. The king takes queen. And now the double check that this lecture is all about. You see it. Yes. Bishop g5. Now it's a double check. Notice that the bishop was on d2. So when the bishop moved from d2 to g5, the bishop actually creates a check of its own and also a discovered check from the rook on d1. So this is the double check. And the beauty of this double check is that the black king has to move. In a double check, you can't block a check because there are two pieces given the check. So blocking the check is not an option. The other option normally is to capture the checking piece. But as you see in this case, there are two pieces, a couple of pieces checking at the same time. So you cannot take both in one move. So again, to highlight the power of the double check, the point is that if you give a double check, you're making the opponent move his king to get out of check. And the king has only two squares. Over here, king to e8 will mean rook d8 checkmate and after bishop g5 if the king moves to c7 you see a mate 
Yes, it's the bishop d8 checkmate. So let's look at the sequence of the moves one more time because this is such a beautiful game. If I'd open the game with e4, black played c6, you remember I said it's the Karo Khan defense. White continues d4, d5 by black, knight c3, exchange of pawns, knight f6, white played queen d3, defending his knight, e5, d takes e5, and now the queen a5 check, which is a fork, bishop d2, queen takes e5, and now the knight was attacked twice, but if you remember, white came up with a plan, long castle. Uh, and now black took the knight and now follows uh, uh, a beautiful ending queen d8 sacrifice king takes d8 and now the double check bishop g5 check if king e8 then rook d8 is checkmate the rook enjoys notice that the rook enjoys the support from the bishop so there's no way a black king can go and if after bishop g5 check king c7 then bishop d8 is made this time the bishop enjoys the support of the rook and the king really has nowhere to go so this is how the double check is very powerful now if you if you have that question popping up in your mind while watching this videos that such things don't happen at great you know big grandmaster levels uh, they'll happen only when beginners play if so wrong the game i just showed you was a game played between two grandmasters two very good grandmasters um, i would like to tell you it's grandmaster reti and grandmaster tata cover it's one of the most famous games that your coaches and your senior players would want you to study and it emphasizes how powerful a double check really is. I hope that you really found this video interesting. And as I keep saying, keep playing, keep enjoying, keep learning. And thank you for watching this video.